Welcome, my friends, to part two of our new video series, Ministers of Unrighteousness. Today, we'll be taking a look at people that have been making merchandise of the saints through their false and destructive teachings. You'll hear the prosperity gospel being propagated. You know, God wants every Christian to be rich, healthy, and wealthy. These destructive doctrines have crept in the front door of the church. They've led many astray. These are false gospels. These gospels cannot save, only keep people damned. You'll see Gloria Copeland, Kenneth Copeland, um, Anita Fuentes, Vonda Brewer, and a few others. These false ministers are not Christians. They are wolves in sheep's clothing. Um, I have many videos already exposing these these individuals on on my Walt Wolf Watch series in the archives. But these individuals have crept into the front door of the churches and they have deceived the masses into believing that these ideas are found in the scriptures. The problem is the people listening the majority of the time they don't check the scriptures to see if these things are so, to see if these wolves of what they're saying are true. Because if they did search the scriptures, they would realize that these so-called teachers don't have their best intentions in mind. They have their pocketbooks and bank accounts in mind. Let me read these scriptures and then we'll take a look at these clips, my friends. Second Corinthians eleven thirteen. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Second Peter two one through three. But there are false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. These individuals are here to make merchandise of the saints. They are here for your money. They could care less about God's word and truth. So with that being said, my friends, let's take a look at part two of Ministers of Unrighteousness. And again, watch through the lens of scripture. Until next time, my friends, look up. Our redemption draws near. Maranatha. Money! Come up to me! The Lord Jesus Christ. Standing on the platform trembling. <laughs> and I said, I claim $150 this week. I'm just going to be there one week. <laughs> Satan, take your hand off my money. Go ministering spirits and cause the money to come. Went on back over the house, laid down, took me now. That, that said it. I don't, he said don't pray, so I don't pray. Oh. You spoke it. I, you? I've never, I've never, for me personally, I've never prayed about finances and again. That day to the 19th. Oh, Paul, Do you claim the amount you need, though? Yeah, I yeah. claim it, but I don't pray like Tithe, like Adam and Eve did? Are you spending the tithe on a boat? Hunting lease? Are you, are you wasting the tithe? You know what the Bible says? The Bible says, if you touch the devoted stuff, you're under a curse. So, a long time ago, I thought to myself, okay, Ed, you either bring the 10% to the house and the other 90% is blessed, or you play God and say, you know what? I'm going to do with the money what I want to do and live under a curse. Let me see. Blessing or cursing? I'll take blessing. I'll take blessing. And you wonder 
why your marriage is stoned? You wonder why your kid's future is stoned? You wonder why your career is stoned with water? You wonder why you don't have joy? You wonder why you deal with greed? You wonder why you all get messed up with envy? You wonder, you wonder, you wonder. It's all about the money. It's all about the money. You don't get it. Please hear me. I discovered that 80% of you were pathological liars. Every time you talk, you just told something that was false. Well, I would talk a lot about truth telling. I would just hammer truth down. Boom. Tell the truth. Speak the truth in love. Be honest. What have I discovered? That 80% of you were smoking crack. 80% of you were on the pipe. Tell you what I would do. And I would talk about the dangers of drug addiction. I would warn you. What if I discovered that 80% of you were burglars? I would talk about money. It's often not that we're doing something wrong. It's that we're not doing enough of what is right. God says in his word that my people, good people perish because of lack of knowledge. You're entering into a new year, a new beginning, and God has great things for you in 2018. In fact, the number 18 means to be alive. It means life. And so I believe that God has life for you, like the woman who was bowed over for 18 years, but that year, 18, she was loose from that spirit of infirmity. I believe this is going to be a supernatural year for you, a year of seeing God's goodness and God's greatness, but God has a way of doing things. You see, God himself all throughout his word said, hey, all first belong to me. He lays claim to it. He says that first are holy. It's the irrevocable giving over to God, things that belong to him that he lays claim to. It's what we call the principle of first fruits. You see, there's a first fruit season. There's a first fruit offering. There's a first fruit feast. Jesus is the first fruit of many brethren. First fruit literally means chief. It means essential, fundamental. It is the first, the choice part of the crop or the harvest. It also comes from a root word of bekor, which means birthright. So all firstborn belong to God. All first of harvest belong to God. All first of new beginnings belong to God. Everything that is a first belongs to God. Think about this in Joshua chapter 7. The children of Israel have just entered in and they've conquered. They've gone across the Jordan. They've conquered and now they're getting to their first city. It's called Ai. And suddenly where they were having victory after victory, they get defeated. Why do they get defeated? The Bible says that Joshua falls down and he begins to cry out and he's praying. And God says, Joshua, stop praying. Stop crying. He said, listen, the problem is with Achan. He's touched the accursed thing. Well, what's accursed mean? It means devoted things. And devoted is the same word as a first, a first fruit. So anytime you touch something that is first, something that belongs to God, it brings some kind of destruction, disorder into our life. As we enter into January, we recognize that there are two calendars in the earth. But January is the first, the beginning of a new year for us in the Western world. Let us give to God what belongs to him. The first hours of our day, the first month of the year, the first of our increase, the first in every area of our life. It's devoted. When you devote something to God, then whatever devoted, here's the principle. The principle of first fruits is that when you give God the first, he governs the rest and redeems it. There is a curse on all of mankind. We know that Jesus, which is why he became the first fruit of many brethren. We understand that the principle of first is so important that whatever you give God first, because it already belongs to him, it redeems the rest. So in the beginning, 
it's very important Deuteronomy 16 16 God says do not stand before me empty-handed Leviticus chapter 3 God says all first belong to him all the way through the New Testament that, that there was a practice of first fruits anytime there was a first of something it belonged to God in fact when you get into the book of Acts and you start to really study Ananias and Sapphira you understand that had to do with the first fruits that's why all of it was given to the Lord. So at the beginning of this year, I want you to make a commitment. The first hours of your day, give to God. I want you to spend time in prayer. I want you to spend time in his word. But it's crucial because he says, do not come before me empty handed. You see what you do in January, no matter what happens in July or August or September, you literally are sending a signal for the promise which is to come. So it, it doesn't mean you can dictate or manipulate what's going to happen in July or August, but it means this, that you have put God first in every aspect of this year. So by doing that and by bringing him an offering, a first fruits offering and presenting to him in obedience to the word, you are redeeming the rest. So I hope there's so much I want to get to you there. There's just so much to study and you go, well, how do I do it? Well, for your first fruits offering, cause I don't even want to say gift because this is so holy. It belongs to the Lord for your first fruits offering and first fruits is the full of, it's not the tithe. Tithe is one tenth of your gross income. It's the first tenth, not just any tenth. That's why it redeems the curse. But the first fruit is the whole of many of us bring one day some of us bring one week some of us bring an entire month's salary because we understand the principle of all first belong to god when you present your first fruits offering of any size i want to get to you my book and that book is the principle of first fruits that first things first all first belong to god i lay this out in extreme detail then for your first fruits offering and you can't really say well this amount of this amount but it just cost us a certain amount of money to get things to you to air to get the gospel out etc so for your first fruits offering of fifty dollars or more i will give you the book as well as a devotional but then for your first fruits offering of seventy five dollars or more you're going to get the book the devotional and a very special calendar with reminders of god's promises all through this year that god has life for you god has life for your relationships for your finances for your ministry for your dream for every area of your life so right now i want you to click on that button and i want you to honor god with his first fruits offering by putting God first this year say God I honor you remember that where your treasure is there your heart is also so give to God what already belongs to him and honor him with a first fruit and you watch if you're June your July your September if God doesn't divinely step in and intervene I don't know what you're going to face he does but I know by putting him first you're putting God in your situation you're putting God in your circumstance because his word cannot lie you know that what I'm about to tell you we've never even asked we've never even done before but this was a specific word a specific mandate from the Lord Jesus Christ so before we go into our next worship song I'm gonna tell you what that mandate is what that word from the Lord is and I want to read it word for word from my own website. I'm going to quickly get it up here. And I want you to make our way. I want you to make your way to our website too. So you can see it word for word as well. Because it says here, 2017 first fruits offering. 2017 first fruits offering. And it says the following. The Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ has given me a word for each of you. This is the word. Are you ready? Hear this. This will set the stage for your 2017 New Year. I'm not kidding. The Lord's not kidding. You want to take this as a joke. That's, that's, that's you. Then your year will be a joke. But for those of you who desire for this year to be a change... For this year to be a true consecration and sanctification unto the Lord Jesus Christ. For you to literally walk in a higher level with the Lord Jesus. To make, to allow an atmosphere 
to be created in your environment, wherever you are at, for you to walk holy as he is holy. Listen up. He gave me this word, and I'm repeating it word for word. It's on our website, so I'm, I'm looking to my right, which is you guys' left, because I'm reading it straight up from the website. I don't want to miss a word. It says, if you start 2017 off right, by sowing your very first first fruit offering into the fertile and good ground of this end time ministry, the Lord Jesus Christ himself will see to it that this year be, and I quote, a holy and sanctified lump for you, and that you seek his blessings for, and all that you seek his blessings for. And you can read that in Romans chapter 11, verse 16. I'm going to repeat that word again. The Lord Jesus Christ has given me a word for each of you. He gave it to me yesterday. It was so quick. It was so unctioned in my spirit that I had to be spread out. I've never spoken a word from the Lord. The Lord's never prompted me to ever speak a word in this church ministry about a first fruit offering. Never. Up until this point. He's never, he's never done it. He's never said it. Never. Now, we're very obedient here when it comes to the things of God. We fear the Lord here in this ministry. And when I heard this word, I immediately went to the word to get the word confirmed. And there is much to say about first fruit offerings in the Bible. And when it comes to the 2017 New Year, however, the Lord is literally saying, if you start 2017 off right by sowing your very first first fruits offering. And the reason why he says he called it, because I asked him, I said, what do you mean by the very first first fruits offering? What does that mean? He said, well, it's twofold. For some, you've never sowed a first fruit offering. You've never done that. It's, it's not even... You've probably never even heard of a first fruit offering, but it is biblical it's in, it's throughout the Bible, both in the Old and New Testament. He says, so, you know, number one, that's for those who, who've never sown a first fruit offering. It will be their very first. For others, it may not be their very first fruit offering. They've probably sown first fruit offerings in other grounds and other ministries. But the reason why he's calling it first for you is because it's in the beginning of the year. It's in the first month of the year. And I, I got to also emphasize this because the Lord spoke to me about this as well. This first fruit offering is for this month only. So, you know, some of you probably don't get paid until next week. Some of you maybe are not able to do it right this second. Some of you are able and you have to do it right this second. And I'm going to tell you this, and I, I, there's more word, by the way, because it says first fruit offering amount. The amount is what he also mentioned, and I'm going to, uh, not just mention, but spoke very clearly, so I'm going to go ahead and give that to you in a second. But again, reading right here, it says, if you start 2017 off right by sowing your very first first fruit offering into the fertile and good ground of this end time ministry, the Lord Jesus Christ himself, not evangelist, not the angels, God bless, the, I praise the Lord for the angels, the ministering spirits that work on behalf of the king, come on, that work all the time, that call him holy, that prostrate themselves before his throne, that come in different levels and different shapes, that have different roles in his government, but not even the angels can touch this. Jesus said, the, he, he said, I myself, the Lord Jesus Christ himself, this is how serious he's taking this, folks, will see to it that this year will be, and I quote, a holy and sanctified lump for you and and all not just for you but it will be also for all that you seek his blessings for and then he broke it down to me he says some of these precious people some of you have been seeking a blessing a specific breakthrough when it comes to your finances i don't know how specific this is this is something we don't talk about here very often. This is something we don't talk about here at Open Your Eyes People. We're constantly talking about headlines, and, uh, and that's fine. We, we're going to continue to by the grace of God. But I'm taking a moment because this is so specific and so serious. When, he get when you're giving and you're going through the motions and you're not giving out of a cheerful heart 
and you're not promoting the kingdom of God's work. You spend more money in the world on the pleasures of the flesh than you spend in the kingdom of God. There is a time coming when North Korea is going to strike us and America is under judgment and it's going to be swiftly upon us and you who call yourself a Christian who are of the wrong spirit robbing God robbing God look in your checkbook when's the last time you gave how much did you give where does your money go what do you cherish? Who are you bitter at? Who are you slandering? Who are you talking about? Who are you abusing? Let me see here. Which version would you like? Do you not know that the wicked will not inherit the kingdom of God? Oh, but I'm not wicked. Paul wrote this to the church in Corinth. Or what, let me give you this version. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit or have any share in the kingdom of God. Well, let me read the NIV. Or do you not know that wrongdoers, so whether you're a wrongdoer, whether you're unrighteous, whether you're wicked, if you're not of the spirit, of the spirit of Christ, and you're not laying everything on the line, your body is not where it should be, your heart is not where it should be, your money is not where it should be, your uh, servitude is not where it should be, your attitude is not where it should be, your sin is unrepentant and not repentant, you're going to drop dead like a fly. You're going to be judged. And God does not judge wrongly. He is giving you time to straighten up. He's giving you time to warn you. Out of his great love and out of his great mercy, he is speaking to you right now. There is a woman. You're about 22 years old. I see you sitting by your bed on the floor. You're crying over some guy. Your name is Ashley. You've got a God News t-shirt on. You look like you're a team player. That lets me know that you like God News. You've got long, dark brown hair. You're upset over some guy. God's been dealing with you for a little while now to give a thousand dollars to God News and you haven't done it. You're being greedy. How a 22 year old, since your number 22 is on your shirt, I believe you're 22. How a 22 year old got a thousand dollars? I could only assume you have rich parents. Maybe I assume wrong. Maybe you worked hard for every dime, but maybe God has given you millions and he wants you to give that thousand. You better give it. Decide. Choose you this day whom you will serve. You can't just give God your money and not your time. You can't just give God your time and not your money. You can't just give God your lip service and not your feet. You have to give God your whole heart, mind, body, and soul and have the spirit of Christ to lay down your life and everything that he's entrusted with you because you're not a, 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 only a son and daughter, but you're a servant of his and everything that you own is his. And when he calls it in, the master calls it in like he's calling it in today. As long. My sister, I know you've been reading the Bible, but as long as we say it's laid up, the wicked going to keep it. But God says time for us to tell that money, you don't belong to the wicked, you belong to us. And I want you to get in the right place. Money coming to me now. Somebody help me dance up here. Glory to God.
Listen to the Holy Ghost. Listen to the Holy Ghost. He's going to set you free tonight. This is your night. Listen to the Holy Ghost. Move with the Holy Ghost. Jesus. Come out of the back and move with the Holy Ghost. Tonight is your breakthrough in Jesus' name. Money. Is breakthrough night tonight? My bills are being paid tonight. My money is coming to me tonight. I deny being broke. I'll never be broke another day. Shouting this way. Somebody dancing this way. Hey, somebody give him glory. Now, why are you walking? Keep walking. I'm going to keep preaching. You keep walking. I'm going to keep preaching. <laughs> Got it ready to go. And we, we have moved over into the final stage of supernatural wealth transfer. Right. So we're, we should be experiencing things we've never experienced before. Did you read all of that? Did you read, two, read, read the rest of it, number four I and five. I am telling you the biggest transfer of property in the history of mankind mm -hmm. has just begun. This is a prophecy now, yep. a word from the Lord. Yep. From Brother Copeland. It has moved over into the final stage. Final stage. Says the Lord. And those who listen to me and follow me and trust me, those who I have taught my word yep, yep. and have given the authority to walk in oh, these things. Oh, praise God. We have authority. <laughs> We've got authority. It mm -hmm. belongs to us yep. from the word of God. We've been redeemed from the curse, which was po uh, poverty, and we've been translated into the kingdom of God, which... Yes, oh, yes, yes, yes. There's no end to it. Wow. It's abundance. Wow. It's the most... Uh, <clears throat> let's see. Authority to walk in these things, it is the most outstanding thing that human eyes have ever seen. Mm. The time is now. Your time. And the time is now. Your time has come. Yep. If you'll get on the Word and start believing it, saying it, putting it in your eyes, in your ears, in mm -hmm. your heart, and saying it out your mouth... Mm -hmm. It'll be your time. Yeah. But that's everybody's decision. That's right. I that's mean, God's not going to decision. decide that for you. You're right. Until we got on the Word of God and we saw it belong to us. Yes, ma'am. And faith <clears throat> came in our heart from this Word right here. Yep. And we acted on it. Now, we could have just left it on the table, but we acted on it. We were tired, tired of poverty. You don't want to leave. You just said something that just... Don't leave anything don't on leave the on table. Don't leave anything on the that's table. That's right. Don't leave it on that's the table. Right. The time has come, your time has come, yep. your hour has come. This is the word of the Lord. Yep. So rise and do those things by faith that you know to do, and all that belongs to heaven, all that belongs to heaven will come into your hands for your joy. Oh, Did praise I skip God. a word no, there? No, you got it. That you, got you it. know to do, and all that belongs to heaven will come into your hands for your joy. Hallelujah. So that belongs to us now. We take it, as you say, if you have taught us, you have to take that. That's right. You have to take by faith that supernatural wealth transfer. And in the remainder of the time like that we it. have here on the broadcast, and you've turned a page two there. Thank you, Gloria. Mm -hmm. 
We have, now this is all available to you. It's all online for you right now. And if for some reason we don't get through the, the rest Preach of this. Preach it to your family. <laughs> yeah. Share it oh, with yeah. your family. Teach yeah. your children. Raise them up. Instead of raising them up with a poverty mentality like I was around, raise them up with a word. 